This is the Rhine. It determined the northern frontier of the Roman Empire. It was the place to see the heaviest bombardment of World War II. Today, it is home to the biggest shipping ports and some of the most industrious regions in Europe. Packed with beautiful places and national treasures, the Rhine is arguably the most precious of the European rivers. But its importance, like the importance of most rivers today, is somewhat forgotten. Now that we are in the 21st century, with the Netherlands importing its tulips from Kenya and peace treaties being negotiated over teleconferences, it is easy to forget that nations are often shaped by their rivers. The Rhine is one of the major European rivers which has its sources in Switzerland and flows in a northerly direction through Germany and the Netherlands, emptying into the North Sea. It is the second longest river in Central and Western Europe at about 1,230 kilometers. It defines the Swiss Liechtenstein, Swiss Austrian, Swiss German, and the Franco German borders before flowing most of its course through Germany and the Netherlands. Lake Toma in Switzerland is the cradle of the mighty Rhine. It lies at an elevation of 2,344 meters in the middle of a nature reserve in Overalp Pass. But you might not find the Rhine marked on your map yet. The tiny stream coming out of Toma is called the Wurderheim and it needs to join up with Hinterheim before it becomes the Rhine. Some 100 kilometers from there, it fulfills its first important task of defining the border between Switzerland and Liechtenstein. Shortly thereafter, it flows into Lake Constance, where Germany, Austria, Switzerland meet. As it passes through the state of Schaffhausen in Switzerland, the Rhine is joined by the waters of Aare, which more than doubles its total water discharge. From there, the Rhine runs some 100 kilometers while defining the Swiss-German border, until it reaches the tiny town of Augs, which is said to have been the first Roman settlement on the Rhine. Just a couple of small turns from there is Switzerland's one and only port city, Basel. Currently, roughly 10% of all goods imported to Switzerland arrive through here. Basel is the final destination for most cargo ships, as at this point, they tend to turn around and head back to Rotterdam. For a large part of its history, this has been the Swiss gateway to the world. For the next 200 kilometers, the Rhine manages the divide between Germany and France. On the way, we pass Strasbourg, a city with extremely conflicting culture a free state for most of its early existence and only occupied by the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 and remained German for some 51 years until it was returned to France at the end of World War I. Of course, then there was World War II and Germany had to give it back one more time. Soon the Rhine enters Rhineland-Palatine and Mannheim is the first of the major cities. It is home to the first reported bicycle ride on June 12, 1817 by Baron Karl von Dres, when he covered 13 kilometers in less than one hour. In my opinion, a slightly less important breakthrough for this city came around sometime in 1885 when Karl Benz drove his motor wagon Some 70 kilometers upstream, we reach Mainz, home of the man of the millennium, Johannes Gutenberg inventor of the printing press. Originally the town dates back to a Roman settlement that served as a military outpost protecting the northernmost border of the empire. The Moganticum Theatre was the largest Roman theatre north of the Alps, seating some 10,000 visitors. Next comes Koblenz, a city in the crossroads of Europe, once a major Roman trading centre as the capital of Prussian Rhine province and more recently as one of the many scenes of heavy fighting and bombardment. The Rhine quickly passes Bonn and Cologne, both of which originally started as Roman settlements, otherwise known as Bona and Colonia Agripensis. Bonn is famously known as the birthplace of Beethoven, where he spent his childhood. Cologne, with its central location, naturally got completely leveled during the war. 
The only thing that remained standing was the Cologne Cathedral, which suffered 11 hits during the bombing. Its tall spires made it a noticeable landmark in the area. Just a little further down the stream is Dusseldorf and Duisburg. Dusseldorf, while never much more than a village for historians, today is one of the most economically vibrant and livable cities in Europe. Duisburg, on the other hand, is the largest inland port in the world, while being 160 kilometers away from the North Sea, and is considered a seaport because it serves ocean-going vessels that travel to Europe, the Middle East and Africa. It, along with Essen, was the industrial center of Germany, and because of this, Duisburg in particular may have been the single most heavily bombed city in World War II. 6th of June 1944 was the date of the Normandy landing, and marked the day that started the Allied push to retake Europe. City after city was retaken at a relatively swift pace, and on the 23rd of March 1945, Wessel and Rees became the staging point of Operation Plunder during the Allied push towards Berlin. The Rhine was the line in the sand that Germany drew as it pulled back facing the Allied offensive. It was the largest remaining obstacle and it was near Wessel and Rees that was finally overcome. And a month later, Adolf Hitler had committed suicide and the war was over not long thereafter. The Rhine finally leaves Germany and its name behind after passing the little harbour town of Emmerich. There, briefly it divides Germany and the Netherlands before breaking up into two rivers, the Waal and Nederinge. If we choose to follow the Nederinge, we will reach Arnheim. Arnheim was the objective of Operation Market Garden. September 17, 1994, the Allies launched their first push across the Rhine. The attack was the largest airborne operation of that point in World War II. While the Allies did manage to secure a number of their objectives, they could not secure the bridges crossing the Rhine, and as such, the main land force could not reach Arnheim. The Netheringe, same as the Wald, both end up in Rotterdam, which is the biggest and busiest port in all of Europe, and once was the biggest in the world. Europort is about the same size as the city of Manchester, and in 2018 was the 11th busiest port in the world. That doesn't sound like much, but it's certainly meaningful when you consider that all other ports that beat it are in China, Singapore, South Korea or Dubai. If you live in Northern Europe and you consume products that have been imported from far abroad, it is likely that these items arrived through Rotterdam. The Rhine is one of the busiest inland waterways in the world. Without it, the amount of trade in the North Sea would be severely reduced, as the volume of goods transported on the Rhine can be estimated at 310 million tons each year. Without the Rhine, it's likely that Europe will be quite a different place. Netherlands would just be kind of a swamp. Germany would be without its richest and most populous regions. Switzerland would be completely landlocked, and as such even more isolated. Without the physical boundary imposed by the Rhine, the French may have ended up speaking German, or the Germans French. And the cars driven by the wealthy may all be coming from Japan. Hey, if you like maps, history, geography, geopolitics, then this is the channel for you and you must subscribe. So yeah, rivers are really important. Not so long ago, before you had cartography or maps that were properly accurate, you needed natural world boundaries like rivers and mountains in order to divide lands. So in fact, 58,000 kilometers or 23% of the world's non-coastal national borders are large rivers as they offer clear objective targets for military conquest, not to mention trade, food, transportation, all of these things, of course, the Rhine offers. So I'm gonna leave this video here and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Also, guess this location.